Hello and welcome to this tutorial about deployment of Azure Stack HCI. This tutorial is not only about the deployment of Azure Stack HCI, but will answer of many of the questions that I hear from these students very often. They have the doubts that whether the Azure Stack HCI is a unique operating system or it is somewhere different from the Windows Server operating system or what uh, is it. Uh, basically so in this uh, video I will explain you that what Azure Stack HCI is and the key components and the functionalities of the Azure Stack HCI operating system and the deployment of Azure Stack HCI along with the managing the HCI operating system and showing you the differences between the uh, Windows Server operating system and this HCI operating system my name is Navneet Kumar I'm a Microsoft certified trainer and the founder of TrainCrest Technologies. The learning objectives of this tutorial are understanding the Azure Stack HCI, the key components and functionalities of HCI and deployment of Azure Stack HCI. If I talk about the definition for Azure Stack HCI, then it is a hyper-converged infrastructure solution that runs on-premises and can be easily connected to Azure for cloud-based backup, recovery, or monitoring purpose. While it might seem like it has its own operating system, it's essentially to clarify that Azure Stack HCI doesn't have a unique operating system, but it is based on the Windows Server operating system itself. So it's built upon the foundation of Windows Server and the core components that power the Azure Stack HCI operating system are the Windows Server number one. So the Windows Server uh, actually provides the underlying operating system kernel to this HCI operating system and helps in setting up the cluster. Next component is the storage space direct feature that allows you to set up a cluster of servers and uh, uh, set up a virtual SAN kind of solution for uh, storage virtualization. Then uh, next component is Hyper-V that enables the virtualization. Hyper-V is Microsoft's virtualization platform and it is used to run the virtual machines on top of the HCI cluster. So when we uh, go with this aggregated mode of uh, storage and uh, compute virtualization, it becomes hyper-converged infrastructure. As I mentioned that this operating system is based on the Windows Server operating system, but it has been fine-tuned with the required packages and uh, the applications only that are necessary to do the virtualization of a storage, compute or network. Unnecessary packages have been removed that makes this operating system lightweight. But yes, the foundation of this operating system is still the Windows Server. You can think of it as a Windows Server Core operating system which has a command line interface or a terminal to do the post installation configuration along with the required packages on it like Hyper-V or the storage space direct feature uh, kind of packages are there. Once we will complete the deployment of this HCI operating system in this tutorial, we will also explore that what roles and features or packages are available in this operating system. So stay with me in this video till the end and uh, to you know explore the differences, key differences between the Windows Server operating system and uh, the HCI operating system. This video can be a helpful guide. If I talk about the key components and functionality of the HCI operating system, number one is hyper-converged infrastructure. It combines the compute, storage and network resources into a single and integrated platform. That's what is known as hyper-converged infrastructure. Number two is on-premises deployment can be deployed in data centers or edge locations. Number three is Azure integration. It supports the seamless integration with the public cloud Azure services for backup, for monitoring or for management purpose. For instance, Azure Arc you want to use for management purpose. 
you want to use the log analytics workspace or as your monitor for monitoring purpose or recovery service vault for backup purpose or as your storage for cloud witness or other storage kind of services that you want to mount in this uh, cluster so it supports that integration next is hybrid capabilities so it enables the seamless integration of on premises and cloud workloads providing you the flexibility to run your workloads in the desired cloud public or private cloud last but not least is the flexibility so when we go with the hybrid cloud the key advantage of hybrid cloud is the flexibility that you get for various hardware configurations and workloads that you can run uh, in on premises and uh, some workloads or key services you can deploy into the azure without any further ado let's look into the deployment of the azure stack hci operating system for the installation of this azure stack hci i will go to the azure arc and from the azure arc i can go to the host environments that i want to manage in this azure stack hci operating system where you will see that you can choose from the hardware that is having a catalog that what type of hardware you want to purchase if i open this link uh, in a new tab i show you that uh, there are three different categories over here in this catalog of hci so you can explore this hci catalog and three categories are validated nodes integrated systems and premium solutions we have if i go with the premium uh, validated nodes first of all so these are some of the validated hardwares available from these vendors that have been validated by microsoft for hci operating system you will look for these different vendors in your area and uh, these validated hardwares actually uh, are there for uh, your hci installations after this you have the second option where you have integrated system in which you get not only the hardware but the pre-installed hci operating system that has been fine-tuned by these vendors and in collaboration with microsoft for your deployment of the hci cluster if you need the premier support then you can look for the premier solutions as well so we have these different categories solution categories that you see for the hci operating system well after choosing the hardware the next thing that you need to do is you need to download and install the azure stack hci for an instance you are going with validated hardware then you will have to do the deployment but for integrated or premier options uh, in the catalog i have already mentioned that uh, uh, you get this hci operating system already uh, pre-installed actually on the hardware now you need to download the azure stack hci operating system where you have options to download it whether you want to go with 22h2 version of this or 23h2 version so you choose the required version then you need to choose the language and if you go with this then you will be downloading the iso image so with this uh, iso image you will be doing the deployment from scratch and then you can uh, uh, create a golden image or thick image of your hci operating system whereas you have the option to download the vhdx files as well so you can choose the english vhdx and then you can download this vhdx file uh, that you can mount with a virtual machine and you can start that virtual machine from this VHDX. This comes with a free trial of 60 days that you can use to deploy it. In my scenario here, because I want to show you the deployment of the operating system as well, so I will be going with the ISO image. So that is this English and this ISO image I'm going to download. So I have copied this uh, uh, link to download this. I will put this link in the description of the video as well where you can uh, check the description and uh, uh, use this link to download the ISO image. Well, I have downloaded the ISO and mounted with this server which is named as host1. I will connect to this server to start the deployment of the HCI operating system. I will power on the virtual machine. and will press any key to boot from the dvd i will choose the deployment option choose an operating system so windows setup that i want to start with this will start loading the booting files
There I will choose the language to install it, which is English United States time and currency. I'm choosing English United States again for that. And the keyboard layout is also US. Next, I will click on install now in case you want to repair the existing operating system. You can repair your system from here. So install now. Setup will start loading the required files. I will accept the end user license agreement. Next. And I will select the option to either upgrade the existing version to the newer version or custom. In my case, it will be the custom installation that I want to do. This is the disk allocated on my virtual machine uh, there, there I will be doing the nested virtualization basically. So this is the hard drive. I need to do the partitioning. So I will choose the partition size. After doing the partitioning, it will do the formatting of this and then I will choose the required partition to do the deployment. This was about the partitioning of the disk and then uh, initiating the deployment of the HCI operating system. This deployment will take few minutes. I will pause the video till then and will resume it once the deployment or these files are copied or the installation is done. Installation, the system was restarted and uh, after the restart, the screen comes which ask you for the local administrator password the user's password must be changed before signing in for the first time i will uh, hit enter to click ok on that the new password i will provide here we'll hit tab to provide the confirmation it's changing the local administrator password over here now password has been set and now I'm logged into this you will see that it's a lightweight operating system it just has the operating system kernel required packages and on top of that the command line interface so it's almost like server core but you will see the key difference between the Windows server operating system even if that is a uh, server core machine or this one so it has limited packages here you will also notice that it has automatically launched this controller script as config to do the post deployment configuration of this server at this moment i don't want to do this this post installation configuration includes the enable, enabling remote management of the system setting up the network configuration the ip dns uh, changing the computer name joining the machine to the domain update settings installing the updates those settings you can do in a user-friendly way with the help of this menu driven tool that has been provided to you with the sconfig script you can run that anytime whenever you are on the command prompt you can run sconfig anytime and uh, you will notice that it's not uh, the traditional command prompt it's a powershell uh, console sconfig and this will support all the traditional commands also that can be executed. So sconfig is the tool, the controller script that you can execute anytime to, to complete the post installation configuration tasks. Now I make some uh, room on this screen of the PowerShell console and I show you the command of server manager module which is uh, get windows uh, uh, feature. So if I show you the windows features available on this system you will notice that it has very limited packages only those packages which are uh, uh, required for the uh, virtualization of the data center be it compute be it storage or the network you will see many of the components are missing over here you don't see the active directory suite the active directory domain services certificate services lds fs rms all of them are missing from here you have DNS, you have file services, you have Hyper-V, you have network controller role, you have remote access for uh, the VPN or direct access to configure. You have IIS for web services to configure. You have uh, storage services. So these are the limited packages that you have over here. You don't see the print servers. You don't see the uh, uh, DHCP. Okay. So for those services, you're going to use a different uh, server altogether. This server is... Uh, the part of the HCI cluster which will be 
hosting the virtualized workloads like the virtual machines or the virtual storage space or the virtual networks. Well, these are the packages that are available in this operating system. That is what uh, it makes it different from the Windows Server Core operating system or the uh, typical Windows servers that we have with all the packages, whether they are required or not. So the operating system has been uh, kept lightweight for uh, the better performance to reduce the number of processes, to reduce the attack surface and the uh, update requirements, less the packages, less the uh, updates will be required that results into the reduced downtime as well. So that is what is being done over here in this HCI operating system. But the base of this operating system is still that Windows Server and uh, the server operating systems kernel has been used over here. So it's not a unique operating system, but a lightweight version of the Windows Server operating system, you can say, especially designed for virtualization. Well, this was the HCI operating system and its deployment that I shown you in this video. In other videos, you will see the configuration and setting up the HCI clusters and running the virtual machines or storage space direct clusters or the virtual networks on top of this HCI cluster. So stay tuned and uh, subscribe to my channel. If you have not subscribed yet, do like the video in case you like the content of this uh, uh, video. Thanks for watching and see you in another video.